A couple weeks ago, I put out this tweet because I wanted to make sure I was covering everything in my beginner course. However, as you can see, it got over 500 responses, went a little viral. I did not expect that, but some of the answers in this tweet are awesome and I want to share that with you. So let's talk about this tweet. I said, when you were first exposed to the world of iOS development, what was a basic thing that confused you? You know, anything with Xcode, Swift, you know, et cetera. And you know, my example was, I didn't realize the, the UI in front of UI button and UI label meant that that was part of UI kit. Like I was importing UI kit, I didn't know what that meant. So I was hoping people would share, you know, kind of embarrassing things that they stumbled upon as a beginner. And again, I did not expect the amount of responses I got. I mean, we got people from all kinds of major companies, very well-known devs, sharing their embarrassing stories about how they got started. So I got the idea for this video because I know many beginners watch my channel and they may be frustrated or struggling on basic concepts. And the point of this video is to say, hey, look, we all started somewhere. So you're gonna get some very well-known devs at big companies talking about what they struggled with. So we're gonna start flipping through some of these tweets and sharing this. And this tweet really sums up what I hope you get out of this video. It says, great thread, I now feel better about myself. And I'm gonna to link to the tweet in the description. I highly encourage you to go check it out and start scrolling through. Uh, I bet it'll make you smile. We're gonna go through these pretty rapid fire, but we'll start with something I'm sure you can relate with, and that is auto layout. Here it says, auto layout. Man, I remember learning it as constraining to a container, to another container. I could just never wrap my head around that concept. The only time I understood it properly when I actually started using auto layout regularly in storyboards. And here's the key why I wanted to feature Ollie's uh, tweet experience greater than education, right? You can't just watch one tutorial and expect to know it. Like many of us developers that are experienced and that know things, we know it because we've done it a hundred times or we spent two hours debugging this one thing. So like he says, experience is greater than education. Repetition is the key. And then also Jordana, uh, adding on to that, Jordana is an engineering manager at Netflix. And by the way, you're gonna hear me like name drop some companies. That is only to let you know that, you know, even developers at very big companies, very experienced, all started somewhere. So again, Jordana had trouble with auto layout since at the time it seemed more convoluted than CSS layouts. And here we have Paul Hudson, who I'm sure many of you know, says, I still have the code from my first project. It was made on a train without the internet while he was learning Objective-C as he went. He says he thought he had to have uh, zips for all screens. And this is what made me laugh here. He says, I often broke outlets. And in order to fix that, he just rolled back the code to undo. So I thought that was pretty funny. And then here we have Lena with probably the most common uh, tweet. Again, over 500 replies. I can't feature them all. But delegates was probably the most common. So if you're struggling with delegates, just know that like we pretty much all did. Next, we have Adam, who's an iOS engineer at Nike with another common one, uh, and that is closures. He says, I still periodically screw up the syntax and I've written thousands of them. And I can add on to that. If I'm creating like a long closure, like I almost never type it out from scratch with like add escaping and whatever parameters and whatever you're returning. Uh, I pretty much always find an old closure, copy and paste, and then edit, right? Because like trying to write that brand new from scratch, I don't have that in my head. And as you can imagine, you may be struggling with the two. Closures was another very common answer in the tweet thread. Now we have Boz, who's the author of Swift Weekly Brief, a newsletter that follows the evolution of Swift. If you're not subscribed to that, you should be. Uh, but it says it all started somewhere back in 2012 or 2013 with Big Nerd Ranch's Objective C book. It said he remembers building a bright colored view controller with a button that would show after an alert was tapped. Very, very basic. But here's why I wanted to feature his tweet, because again, this is probably very relatable to a lot of you. It says, a roller coaster from there. I understand it. No, I don't understand it. I understand it. No, I don't. And that pretty much sums up your whole development career as you learn new things because you never stop learning no matter how senior you are. And it is a roller coaster. And with the release of Swift UI, that's a great example. Now, not all of us, of course, but many of us are new to declarative programming. So learning Swift UI is kind of going back to being a beginner again. So again, we're back on that roller coaster. Now we have Rebecca Slacken with one word, sums it up nicely provisioning. Even experienced developers still have nightmares about provisioning because oftentimes you set up all the provisioning profiles, certificates, and all that stuff, entitlements, usually set that up at the beginning of a project, and then you're, you're done for the most part. So after you fumble your way through that, you don't have to do it again until you start a new project, which for some people could be years. So yes, provisioning, if you're struggling with that, that still trips up even experienced developers. And Gen K made me laugh with this one because I know I've been there. I'm sure many of you have been there, but breakpoints. You know, she set a breakpoint, had no idea why her program kept stopping. Well, if you don't know what a breakpoint is, you set a breakpoint to tell your program to stop so you can debug. And I know I've been there thinking my app was crashing for some reason and like having a little mini panic attack. And then, oh no, I just, I just had a breakpoint somewhere. 
Next, we have Dave Verwer, author of iOS Dev Weekly, another great newsletter. Go sign up to that if you're not. It says, I remember reading the paragraph in the docs that covered auto-release about 20 times and still not really understanding when or why I'd use it. Now, if you're new and you're wondering what auto-release is, don't worry about it. That predates me even. That's an Objective-C memory management thing. But the reason I still wanted to share this was because Dave talks about how he went and read the documentation 20 times and still didn't get it. So I know many beginners get frustrated after they maybe watch one tutorial or maybe read the documentation once and then they get frustrated. Like a lot of things will take multiple reads and multiple practice with to finally get it. And, and Dave's tweet illustrates that. And now we have Chris Wilson with another very common uh, confusion point, if you will, is the functions like view did load, view will appear, view did appear. Like normally you're used to writing a function and then you have to call that function manually. Well, these ones get called by the system. So that is often confusing. Many beginners are like, well, where do I call view to load? Where do I do this? Well, the system calls that. Now, this was another very common answer, and I remember being confused about this myself. Here we have Mark Sicaria, engineering manager at Twitch, says, uh, that was 10 years ago, so forgive this egregious one. That's the whole point, Mark. This is supposed to be the embarrassing ones, right? Uh, views versus view controllers. And I'm still even guilty, even in some of my tutorial videos, of saying view when I meant view controller. And again, that's just an artifact of a bad habit I had that when I was confusing views and view controllers. So uh, another very common confusion, and I know Mark and I know he's really into StarCraft too and he's a Protoss main. So I had to fire back with a, a nice little joke answer saying it's simple. It's like a carrier, right? A view controller can hold and control a bunch of views. Uh, I guess you have to play StarCraft to, to get that joke. But moving on, we have Keith Moon said, I've been a professional iOS developer for a year before I realized you could create your own protocols. In those early days, I was very much faking it until I can make it. I kind of did the same thing. I I've said this before in my story that I got hired at my first developer job, not for my existing developer skills because I was fresh out of a boot camp. They just like me, my attitude, my work ethic and had confidence that I would learn it. But my first year of the job was basically on the job training. And I've said many times before, like I didn't really understand delegates and protocol pattern until like a year into my career. It sounds like Keith had the same thing with declaring your own protocols. Next, we have Bashar al Mala uh, passing data. That was another very, very common answer, but I like how he uh, described his initial solution, which was kind of funny, right? He says, passing data between view controllers uh, and sprite kit scenes was something I struggled with a lot. His solution, in quotes, uh, was to just use global variables everywhere. So everything had access to his variables, right? You don't gotta pass the data if everybody can access it. So I thought that was funny, but again, passing data was a very, very common uh, answer to this. Moving on to Chris Idoff of objc.io, author of many, many great books uh, all about Swift and iOS development. Uh, you can check them out, but uh, how to best organize my code. Even in my very first project, the view controllers were way too large. And that was another common answer, the whole massive view controller, right? A lot of people, when they start, they just do everything in one view controller. Uh, and then eventually you'll learn how to like break things out and compartmentalize. But uh, again, another common mistake. So if you're making that one, still try to fix it, but just know that a lot of people started out doing that. Another one that I used to be very guilty of uh, from Shahab or, or Jay Penguin, uh, optionals. I used to force unwrap all the things without realizing like that's why you had so many crashes in your app. So again, a lot of beginners will start off like not fully understanding when and how to unwrap your optionals. Uh, so you just say, whatever, Xcode's telling me to force unwrap because that was, it used to be like the, the fix it in Xcode where you would tap it and it would just force unwrap it for you. So I know a lot of people would do that just to get rid of the error and it would end up, you know, force unwrapping at the wrong time and crashing the app. So I used to be very guilty of that. Now we have JP Samard of Lyft and the Swift Unwrap podcast says, I remember first dragging images on the interface builder with Xcode 3, uh, running it in the simulator and now thinking, now what, right? I got, I got my pixels onto the screen, but how do I make it work? And I remember that vividly, like, cause I started off, you know, just dragging and dropping stuff in interface builder. I could make the screen look like I wanted. And then I was like, okay, how do, I, how do I make it work, right? So I remember that exact feeling uh, vividly, just not in Xcode 3. I think I started in Xcode 6. But anyway, I'm sure, I'm sure we've all been there. Sticking with Interface Builder, I like this tweet. Um, interface Builder's structure, file owner, responder. Again, that predates even me, but Interface Builder used to be a separate app from Xcode, right? I know many of you new people may not remember that. Again, that predates my time as well. But uh, here's a nice picture of it that I, I thought would be fun to share how Interface Builder had a lot of floating screens. It was a separate app from Xcode. Uh, Rough times back in the day, rough times. Next, we have Jordan Morgan of Buffer and independent app developer of Spenstack, but he says that UI kit could only run on the main thread. And what exactly that meant, right? Main thread, background thread, what, what did that all mean? So threading was another common answer. 
And then we have Simon Rice with another common one, uh, something I've addressed in a recent video, was uh, probably seemingly random crashes that turned out to be uh, IB outlets I forgot to hook up. So again, that is another common thing for beginners. You know, you're creating all these outlets and actions and then you're making changes and then things get all out of whack and, and your app crashes. So I'm, I'm sure you've run into that before, but this was another super common answer. Now we have a fun one from Ken here, a little Apple history for you. He says, how might it be possible to type quickly and accurately on a touch screen? So during the iPhone development, uh, you know, they were competing with BlackBerry and people could type real quickly on a physical keyboard. So how do you type quickly and accurately on a touch screen? Because it was really tough. So if you don't know, what Ken and the team did was they would kind of predict what you were typing. For example, if you typed a T, it was very likely that you were going to type an H next. So they would make the hit target for the H key a lot bigger. And then if you type TH, now it was way more likely that you're going to have an E after that. So the E would be bigger. So it's not actually bigger on the screen, but just the actual touch target is bigger. So that allowed for quick, accurate typing using like, it was like predictive. So that was a fun answer. I enjoyed seeing Ken chime in here. And another one from back in the day, oh my God, what do you mean we can't discuss this in public? Like even with our coworkers, our friends, you know, you can't publish books about it. So again, a little bit of a history. If you were working on iOS apps, like before the app store even launched, like you were part of like the launch process, you had to sign an NDA. You couldn't say anything about it. And then here we have Mario with one about navigation. Back in 2011, I decided to build my first app on iOS 4.3. I had no idea how to handle navigation. So the whole app was built in a single view where the elements were like hidden and shown based on the user state. And I was like hearing these stories about how people built these really, really weird apps because they didn't really fully understand it. You know, they got it working, but uh, definitely not the way it's supposed to be. And then finally, we have Alan Wickstead here. I was essentially terrified of all the build settings and such menus. I still don't know what I'm doing in there, but at least I'm not terrified. I'm a little terrified. <laughs> like, like here, I'm putting it up on the screen. Like, I'm not gonna lie. If I'm digging in here and doing stuff, like I'm walking a tightrope. Like I'm usually following some tutorial or some Stack Overflow post. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing when I really, really dig into here. And I bet a lot of other people don't either. So if you don't understand all this stuff, like don't worry. I bet a vast majority of developers feel the same way. So that's all the tweets. Again, to put up this tweet, the whole point of this video was to let you know that even experienced developers working at well-known companies, like we all started somewhere. We all have these embarrassing stories that we did at the beginning. This is targeted at you out there that is at the beginning. So hopefully this makes you feel a little bit better again, as this tweet shows. So again, pretty much every developer has been there. Just fight through it. It will get easier.